every person that I have ever talked to that has played Dragon Nest for any length of time has told me that it was one of the best MMOs that they had ever played. And, and, wait, wait, Larry, what, what is going on with the footage in the background? No, we're supposed to have footage of Dragon Nest, not Dragon Ball Z. This is footage from Dragon Nest? N no, no, no. Hey, my name is Stix and welcome back to another episode of Is It Worth Playing? A video series where we analyze every facet of an MMO and come up with an objective of an opinion as possible as to whether this title is worth playing in 2022. Quick shout out to our patrons over on Patreon. This allows you to directly support us if you're interested. Every patron will have their name appear at the beginning of every single YouTube video and you'll be immortalized in the MMO genre forever. Today, we're taking a look at Dragon Nest. This was arguably one of the most popular anime MMOs of its time, providing players with some of the fastest, most fluid combat, PvP, and honestly, some highly unusual animations. Wow. Why am I just noticing this now? Now, I last played Dragon Nest back in the middle of 2021. That was probably the first time in five years that I had logged into this game and it had changed substantially in that time period. It's been about seven, eight months since then, and after logging in for the first time, not only was I presented with the most welcoming return ever, they actually, they... What was that? <laughs> but I was also gifted with even more powerful items. For reference, when I came back last year, I was given a powerful accessory that gave me tens of thousands of attack power, allowing me to one shot every monster, every boss up until I think it was probably roughly around level 70. I stopped playing at level 87 and at the time was two, maybe three shotting bosses. After coming back this time, however, I was given multiple additional pieces of gear that gave me hundreds of thousands of attack power and allowed for me to one shot bosses in the dungeon after the dungeon I was in. So I didn't even need to run to them and do them. I felt like, uh, like Saitama, just not bald and this allowed me to catch up pretty rapidly though. I proceeded to hit level 95 with absolutely no issue whatsoever and due to that at the same time, no challenge. This left me to do one of a few different things, either continue with the story, which would take me to new areas, which would have me run dungeons I'd never run before as I made progress towards hitting end game, or I could pursue missions via the mission board. I could do my awakening quests, I could improve my class, I could unlock new skills. But I was level 95 after what, like less than 20 hours of playing the game with a rudimentary level of understanding of my character, the systems present within the game, or heck, the game itself. Disregarding how overpowered I was upon my return and how confused I was at this juncture, Dragon Nest is a great looking anime MMO. Aesthetically, it has a pretty unique style. Character models are more flat, they're, they're shaded with less visible detail than in games like Aura Kingdom or Soul Worker, but different games of different graphical styles, so it makes complete sense. The game world, however, is gorgeous. You'll see enormous towns, massive cities, you'll have epic fights with dragons, with demons. Speaking of combat, many players argue that Dragon Nest has the best combat in the anime scene, and I guess, I don't know. Let me preface this by stating that in my personal opinion, and this is going to be quite a contentious opinion for fans of Dragon S, but it just doesn't have the best combat in an anime MMO to me. And we're all welcome to have an opinion, right? Oh, we're, we're not? Well, too bad, because I think games like Soul Worker and PSO to New Genesis have better combat in terms of an anime MMO, but they also at the same time feel like completely different types of games. Dragon S employs 
I don't know, I feel like much more of a a traditional action combat system. You bind your abilities to a variety of different keys and you have a fairly large hotbar, something that the two aforementioned games lack. So Worker is about binding a few different abilities and comboing them with other abilities. PSO 2 New Genesis is a very small pool of skills to pull from per weapon, but provides you the option of equipping multiple. Combat in Dragon Nest feels pretty good, not over the top with tons of special effects cluttering your screen, but a little more tame. Dragon Nest is a hub MMO, meaning that combat always takes place within instances. The game itself isn't entirely based around instances, however. Every town, every city, every zone is disconnected from one another via loading screens. But with the exception of dungeons, the world allows for players to group up, to connect with and engage one another. You'll find players scattered around a variety of different areas, with the exception of the dungeons themselves. This looks and feels pretty much like any other MMO. The bulk of the content though, dungeons, raids, PvP are all instanced, meaning that once you enter, you won't be able to encounter other players. Grouping up therefore requires you formulate a group in anticipation of entering. I think in the, the 20 or so hours that I played this game, I moved through six, maybe seven different towns and cities, and each one not only looked incredibly unique, but were also very, very large. I couldn't imagine this on an open world scale like WoW. The world itself, while very appealing aesthetically and filled with NPCs and players, still felt a little empty. I don't know if I'm the only one that feels that way or not, there's just something satisfying seeing people out in an open world partaking of the same content that you are that just isn't present in hub MMOs. This game, while it can feel a little empty at times, is absolutely filled with story though. If you've been watching my videos, you'd know I dislike MMOs that do not have a narrative. If there's no story to follow, how are you supposed to become enthralled in the world that you find yourself in? How are you supposed to become attached to the different characters that you meet? NPCs just become generic old dude number one, or generic woman with booba number seven, etc, etc. Look at Final Fantasy XIV and World of Warcraft. Fourteen has players actively playing because of the story, and WoW has players constantly complaining how bad its story is. This is evidence to how important a story is in an MMO. Most popular MMOs have a strong narrative. Final Fantasy XIV, World of Warcraft, The Elder Scrolls Online, Guild Wars 2, Lost Ark. I feel though that a lack of a story is a, a detriment to a game, and especially an MMO, where you're required to continue playing for months, for years at a time. It's part of the reason that many people come back to these games when new content drops. And, and Dragon Nest, uh, well... <laughs> Dragon Nest admittedly has a ridiculous amount of text. Much of it is exposition, and I feel like the, the vast majority of it likely could have been easily summarized, much more easily condensed into something much more manageable, much, much more easily digestible in one-tenth of the time. It's actually so drawn out that I spend much of the game holding spacebar to skip the 33 successive windows telling me that I need to go kill a goblin before returning to another 20 windows telling me thank you. As this is a hub MMO, the amount of content is relatively limited comparatively to games that offer open world features. There aren't world bosses, there's no open world PvP, there are dungeons, which is the bulk of the game, there are also raids to run for players who want more difficult content to play in. More than that, the dungeons themselves have several different difficulties. Each difficulty increase is quite substantial and is the difference between one-shotting dungeon bosses and actually needing to dodge an attack here and there while leveling. There is PvP, but honestly, regardless of when I actually took the time to queue for it, I could not seem to ever find a queue. I could not participate. Active players, they, they gave me the impression that players participate in PvP at certain hours, hours that I just did not stream. And well, realistically, that's, that's kind of all I've ever done. Beyond that, I don't think there's really much more to it, is there? If there are actually genuinely other types of content that I've missed that aren't just related to dungeons, raids, or PvP, then please go down and let me know in the comment section below because I would love to include it in the future. At the end of the day, 
Dragoness is a very fun MMO. The game looks great, granted its, its character creator leaves a lot to be desired and its selection of classes can feel a little excessive given multiple of them have the same character models, the same weapon types and general playstyle. The combat is great, but not nearly as good as many players make it out to be, which goes to show that nostalgia definitely plays a part in how people perceive games both new and old. It's a hub MMO, so content wise, it, it's kind of limited, but that doesn't mean that there isn't plenty to do. I did find the gear they provided me to hit endgame as quickly as I did to be fairly game breaking. It made what is a fun, what is an engaging game into something that you pretty much have to pay zero attention to because why would you? Is this the greatest MMO? No, it is far from it. But you know what? To some people, it still very well might be. Honestly, for an anime MMO, this game has some pretty damn good action combat. Graphically, the character models felt very flat, but everything else was vibrant and popping. The narrative was excessive and there was far too much exposition to really enjoy. The world is pretty large, there are a plethora of different towns, cities, and zones to explore. If you factor in the sheer number of instances, then there is an exorbitant number of things to do. But disregarding dungeons and raids, there really isn't that much variety that I'm actively aware of. Admittedly though, Dragon Nest has a lot of things going for it, but at the same time, it has just as many things, maybe even more, inhibiting it, including a very low player base and accusations of extensive pay to win. Have I seen it? Yeah, somewhat. Is it going to affect me if I play? Not at all, unless I PvP. But I've learned better than to PvP in free MMOs. Not only is it unbalanced, but it's just as unfair. Now, if you're interested in my thoughts on other MMOs, I have another video in the series available for you to click right here. Or if you're interested in a variety of different games that might be worth playing, I have a video featuring 10 different games that you can try out right here.